This week, it's going to be super sunny. We are going to be painting yellow and yellow is usually not a flower. Well, not flower, well, it's not a colour that I would usually go for and to paint the entire page yellow for me was quite a challenge. I would typically do red or blue but yellow is not as common so I don't know about you but I hope that you're going to take this up as a challenge too. We're going to start off with a really sunny one which is the sunflower and I can't wait to get you into it because we're going to be slowly learning how to dissect some of these petals, helping you to differentiate some of them and hopefully create some depth. Let's jump in! Here are some of the supplies that we'll be using. If you're new to my channel, welcome and my name is Gillian. I'm a full-time watercolour artist who loves to show people how to embrace the mess and magic of watercolour. Let's begin today's tutorial. Today's video, we are going to be doing all the yellow flowers. So. I am going to be using my favourite flower colour guide as my reference and the nice thing about the flower colour guide really is that the colours are already categorised and grouped for you so here was where I got my inspiration to paint my yellow flowers and let's start with something really really big, bright and super happy which is the sunflower. I've actually not tried painting this flower before so I think it's going to be a real treat for us to try doing it. Let's start by setting my reference book aside and I've got all of my supplies ready here to go. So make sure that you pick out your favorite brushes when you are painting and remember to have this really light, fun attitude about coming here today. Thank you so much for joining me as always. I really appreciate having your presence and it's really fun just exploring various flowers and also showing my process and also getting to talk with you through my process. Starting off with my half inch flat brush, I'm going to be pulling out my yellow and my palette here is really quite messy and dirty. So I'm going to just spray it down a little and hopefully clean it up a bit. Let's start painting the flower using my half inch flat brush. This is from Princeton Velvet Touch. I am using the side of my brush and holding it at an angle for me to get those nice petals. You can see that I'm moving from the outside in and I'm taking my time to observe the reference photo and seeing that the petals are really moving in various directions. There are some that are folded, so you want to keep all of those in mind as you're painting. Now I'm also keeping in mind some of those petals that kind of enter the middle brown stamen and I'm putting them there while the areas of my painting are still wet. I'm adding in some orange hue to give it a little burst of colour. So I started with a wet in dry technique and now I'm basically going in with a wet in wet technique when I'm adding in another hue to charge over that colour. I'm going to be starting with painting the centers and at this stage my flowers are a little dry and some of it is damp. So you can see the top flower is actually damp so this gives a little bit of a furring effect which honestly I really love because there's that soft look to the stamens and there's a bit of a blend where the brown is seeping into the yellow so depending on the kind of effect that you want I would encourage you to try out having some of your petals wet and then adding in that brown or if you want a more defined look like the one in the center that I'm doing right now you can see that that one is fully dry so the browns are not bleeding into the yellows at all. I noticed that I did not leave much space for the center so you can see that I'm actually using my brown and really going and eating into the petal area because if you look at the sunflower it has a pretty big stamen so you want to keep in mind that that center is pretty large so as a result that brown is going to take up a lot of space. I'm using this stippling motion where I'm just dotting all around so that you get a bit of texture. I'm also using 
using some dry brush effect so that I get some of those furriness that you can see that are just around the edges of the stamen. I am varying my browns with a Van Dyke brown and I'm also adding in a slight pad of indigo into my brown because I find that it gives a really nice smoky brown. I'm gonna let the flower fully dry and tackle the stems right now so I am painting my stems and the leaves and right now I've already mapped out the first layer of my flowers so I am noticing that the stems are pretty thick as well so I actually went back in to thicken that stem because the sunflowers as you can tell the reference photo shows that the stems are pretty thick so we want to kind of mimic that and make sure that you've got a nice thick stem I just want to share at this point that I was trying to copy or do the same leaf that the reference photo showed and you can see the reference book is opened on the left hand side and I didn't really like that leaf that I painted because somehow I felt like once I put down that leaf the entire composition felt like it was being pulled down so we are just going to live with it and what we're going to have to do is that the flowers that are all around will have to compensate or try and remove the attention away from that leaf because right now I feel like there's so much green in that area and it's kind of taking the attention away from the flower or even dragging it down I'm going in with my second layer where I'm trying to differentiate the petals from one another now you don't have to differentiate every petal but what I'm doing is that I'm going in with a slightly darker color value especially where I've got brush strokes that are stuck together and I want to just showcase that there's a petal in the front and one in the back this is where I decide to define those petals so as I said you don't have to define every single petal choose and pick those that you feel looked to mesh together and this is where you can decide to create more whether it is by adding a couple of lines or changing up the color value of those petals. Now I know that most of the video is sped up and this painting actually took about 45 minutes to paint, not 10 minutes as you can see in the video. But I also know that sometimes nobody can sit through a 45 minutes video. That being said, I would love to hear your comments and tell me what you think. If you would prefer the videos to be in real time or if you prefer them in this format. I should have mentioned this in the beginning but the yellows that I'm using is a darker yellow. So these are permanent yellow deep from Holbein and I love to use nice bright warm yellows for my sunflowers just because you can see in the reference photo those yellows are really nice and warm so they are closer to the red spectrum as compared to using your cool yellows so I think that selecting the type of yellows for your florals are also very important and this is going to help you to define the flower overall. Now that my stems have dried, let's go back in to add a couple of layers. I'm using the same color again. This is a mix of Chrome Oxide and Hansa Yellow Deep. This gives me a very nice dark kind of earthy olive green if you will. Now I would always add a little of my flower mixture to my greens because I find that this gives color harmony. I don't really want to give too much attention to that leaf that I mentioned so I'm just adding in shadows where it is close to the flower so you can see that's what I'm doing. 
as you build up the layers of your greens, remember to also not add too much dark layers. So some of the notes that I have, the mental notes I have at the back of my mind is that whenever I'm adding my darker tones, it should not overpower my light tones. And I typically have the ratio to be around 30% of mid and darker tones and the rest of it should be lighter tones. And this is because most of the time, you've got light casted on your flower and you want to make sure that your flower is standing out and those darker tones is just to provide some contrast so that the lighter area actually looks brighter. Hi! Dropping in to give you a word of encouragement. You are doing the best that you can. You're showing up for yourself. And I love that you are here painting with me today. One of the important things when you are painting from reference is to decide where exactly you want to place your elements. Now I've added in this green leaf that is on the top and this is to offset that leaf that is pulling it down and I'm hoping that the viewer's eye actually moves towards this leaf instead of the leaf that's at the bottom. So this is me trying to troubleshoot and compensate for that leaf that I've added that I felt was really dragging the whole thing down. We are soon coming to the end of this painting. I had a lot of fun doing this. Considering that it was my first time painting it, I wish that I was a little looser in my strokes. But one of the things that I learned is that the moment I start adding in details and starting to define certain petals, I kind of have to do it throughout the painting so that the whole thing looks consistent. I also started to add a bit more to the stamen and create that kind of furry effect that I saw in the reference photo so that it mimics some of that. Now I had so much fun and if you had fun too, remember to like this video so that the algorithm will share this video to others. At the same time, drop your comments and let me know how your experience was like as you were painting with me or if you were watching me paint. How did you find the yellow sunflowers? Wasn't it fun? Well, if you didn't think it was fun or if you felt like your painting is still a work in progress, I want to drop this encouragement to you that you showing up here today and painting and putting paint to paper and doing this all with me counts. It counts so much because it means that you're showing up for yourself and it can also mean that over time your art is only going to get better and also it also shows that you value all of this so i want you to continue to show up for yourself regardless of how the art turns out and at the same time if you find that through these videos there have been small wins or small aha moments don't forget to put them down journal it out because i feel like that's so valuable and it's going to help you to process it and sort of deepen your learning let's meet again the next time and we are going to be painting daffodils <laughs>